Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, CGB, with editor Maddie B, making content for the Arena Craft Podcast YouTube page, where I am a proud host with my friend Arjuna on a weekly podcast show. So if this is your first time checking out my content for Arena Craft Podcast page, make sure you subscribe to get our weekly podcasts and the occasional fun gameplay videos. And today I'm going to play some historic and I'm going to be playing a deck that I found on Twitter that got to seven wins in the historic open that occurred last weekend. By the time you watch this, who knows when it occurred. So anyway, the historic open, that best of one thingy that happened. This deck got to seven wins and it's a feather deck, a Jeskai feather deck, which is very exciting. Johan, this is embarrassing. Do dog none? on Twitter. That is who I saw the deck come from. So blatant net deckery, but like many of you, I am a fan of so many things about the game and I'm a fan of content about the game. And actually one thing that I really miss from my life before I was making content was the amount of time I had to consume content, copy other people's decks, play them and uh, figure out what I liked, what I didn't like, things like that. So uh, I hope you won't mind if I indulge myself on this video and do a little net decking of my own. I'll recommend some changes if I find any that I think would be a good idea at the end of the video. And in the meantime, we'll just enjoy uh, letting it fly. So Feather, how does Feather work? Well, we got Feather the Redeemed, this awesome angel that whenever we cast an instant or sorcery returns it to our hand after it uh, as it resolves, instead of going to the graveyard. It's kind of an interesting replacement effect that lets us use our instance again and again. And the main reason that Feather is stronger in Historic than in Standard is Reckless Rage. Reckless Rage, it does 4 damage to a target creature and 2 damage to a creature you control. Because it targets a creature you control, it triggers Feather, so you get it back. So any creature that the opponent controls with a toughness of four or less pretty much gets roasted again and again for one mana, which is a very, very powerful effect. To pair up with Feather and also take advantage of all of these spells we're casting, we have a number of other threats in the deck. It's actually got more threats than I have usually seen in Feather decks with two Seasoned Hollow Blades, four Dreadhorde Arcanist, which has another cool instant uh, effect or instant and sorcery effect where you can cast them out of the graveyard, so it's like backup Feather. Four Sprite Dragon, which gained plus one, plus one counters, and four Tenth District Legionnaire, which gains plus one, plus one counters when it gets targeted. So uh, we play small creatures. They become huge because we're casting a flurry of spells that Feather is getting back over and over. Defiant Strike draws cards. God's Willing Fight is one Protect Feather. The one of Aethergust is probably good in most matchups in Historic because red and green are still very powerful colors. The Staggering Insight I really like. Staggering Insight might just be a game stealer against the likes of red decks, goblins, things of that nature. And of course, three shocks. The main targets in the meta are going to be goblins, and there's a mono white aura deck that's floating around. And if you can get the Reckless Rage going and keep them from getting auras on their creatures, then you're in a good position. All right, I've introduced a bit of the deck. Let's dive in and let the nonsense begin. This hand is on the draw. We have Shock and Rage. So those are two really good cards to play against our opponent. Uh, fig D. Fig D? Fig, fig G -G D? Anyway, we have to gatekeep because we got paired down against somebody in Diamond. So let's get them. Let's show them what Mythic is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will defend the land. This is mono red, might be mono red. Not willing to play into the shock though. So if we play a 10th district Le legionnaire, they're really likely to kill it. So let's go with the hollow blade. All right, no removal yet. Goblin war chief. Well, goblins it is. Not surprising. Lots of gobos in the meta. So this looks like we don't have enough red mana to get down a Legionnaire unless we draw it. This probably looks like we need to play... We've got to get this off the field. So we probably have to shock this. Oh, ho, ho. wow. Uh, huh. Let's go in for the block, I guess. 
We could just trade them, but I think that casting the Legionnaire is going to be difficult and we have enough threats. This frees me up to play the Feather next turn. So I'm going to drop off the Legionnaire. You, you love to see it. So what does that tell us about their hand? They have multiple War Chiefs. They are going to try to run me out of cards and then do their Muxus thingamajig. I think we take this opportunity to slam Feather. If we untap from this position with the Feather on the field, we're in good shape. And they don't... I don't think they have a ton of ways to kill it. Like Gem Palm Incinerator and Volley Veteran require goblins on the battlefield to damage the Feather. And I don't think they can get enough of them. It's Snoop time. There is a Wily Goblin. The opponent starts playing cards off the top. And they have another Snoop sitting there. That's going to be awkward. Staggering Insight. Oh my. This is a tough one. On one hand, I do want to kill the Snoop, but they're just drawing another. We definitely need to kill something, but we can hold up the Reckless Rage. If they go for a Muxus, we can kill the Muxus before all the creatures come in. And we can have Fight as one for protection. But maybe I'm supposed to just Staggering Insight and be more aggressive than that. I'm going to try it. The life gain could be crucial. I could draw another red source. Another red source would almost put this game away. Oh, oh my. Yes, indeed. All right, target creature you don't control, that's you. Target creature you control, that's this. And we get it back. Snoop returns. Snoop sees a warden. And there's a, there's a Muxus right on top. The real question now is, does the opponent also have another mountain? All right, they want to rumble. I think we get this goblin off the field. We could use fight as one to do it, and then we untap with two red sources to pick off two other things. But I think we just discard. That way, we can go target creature you don't control, target creature you control, get the snoop gone. Drop off one of these. We only need one because the feather will bounce them back in the future. And this gets the most goblins off the field. We just need to keep removing goblins from the field. If we do that, we should be fine. And we get to turn up the heat on the opponent. It's only a one turn clock now. Let's not show them the fight is won. It's a little extra damage, but it shouldn't make a difference. God's willing. Now we get back the rage. The opponent didn't have the land, right? So they shouldn't be able to play this. Even if they did, we could kill it with the trigger on the stack, which would make it very hard for the opponent to wreck us, but you never know. This card is an explosion of value. We are instigating. And with three mana open, what could it be? I suppose they could have the Gem Palm Incinerator. Let's find out. Doesn't look like they have anything right now. I think I was supposed to do that in the main phase. Now it won't come back till the end of my turn, which means I'm one short of lethal. Let's see if we can scry for that some way to deal one more damage. One more damage. It worked out. Whew. Yikes. Can't keep that. That is not the hand we are looking for. Oh man, I don't know if this is what we can keep either. It's too slow. It's too slow. Tap land, tap land, legionnaire on the draw, no. Better, closer, warmer. I 
think we put back the fight as ones. Keep willing gust feather. Hope that the gust is relevant. It's risky, right? If we keep the gust and our opponent's not playing a deck that the gust is good against, we mulligan to four. But if we don't keep the gust, we have no interaction. We just have a bunch of pump spells. So this is the way I'm going to do it. And we'll see how it pays off. Chromatic Sphere. Looks like Underworld Breach combo, which I've never played against. Just something I've seen popping up on Twitter. Haven't played with it either. Maybe we'll do that for a future video. So we might learn how the combo works. They sacrifice the sphere for a black mana. They draw a card. They play Lazav. Lazav surveils. Lazav cannot be targeted by the gust. It's not red or green. And they kept on top. Can't be too bad. Do we play the Arcanist? It's not like it does much. If the opponent decides to kill it, so be it. I think we have to be assertive here. If they're the combo deck, we're the aggressor. Aether's Spellbomb. They can sacrifice it to return target creature to owner's hand. Mox Amber, Emery. Oh my goodness. This game might be over. There goes a Breach. Staggering Insight off the top. What to do? I guess we can gust, we can try to gust a Breach. Our opponent also, they, they've got the spell bomb. Like it's gonna be hard to do anything here. I'm gonna run out the feather and hope for the best, but I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get very far in this game. Like God's willing doesn't even work because of the spell bomb. No. And they can just get it back. Oh no, they sacrificed it to draw. Okay, they're feeling really strong about going off here. Yeah, Emery spell bomb is pretty nuts, actually. They're using it with sphere here, but if they were actually worried about my creatures, they could just get back the spell bomb over and over for the Emery. That's really good. I like that. Ooh. Okay. Protection from multicolor. And no way to remove it. I am, uh, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> I don't think I have a chance. I think if there is a chance to be had, we have to hold up the Aether Gust and try to buy one more turn. Putting the Staggering Insight on the Feather won't do any good. This has Reach and Protection from Multicolor. I could, I can't even give it protection from something to sneak through because this is colorless. Yeah, this is, this is not a game. This is, this is as one-sided I think as it gets. I do hope, I, I, I hope that the, it's not prolonged torture. I kind of want them to just go off and finish me so that I can see how the deck works. But they're just playing that and saying go. That's disappointing. Yep, they're just going to use that to draw a card. The Emery Spellbomb thing, I really want to do this now. Like the... <laughs> ah, they go for the Sphere. It feels like getting the Spellbomb would always be better, so they must have a plan. Let's see what they do. Mm. Alright, just cards. They just want the cards. <laughs> My deck is completely roasted. It would be great to draw Reckless Rage, though. And there is still a chance we can draw Reckless Rage. Alright, Emery bails. Still no breach. Alright. Let's try a God's Willing. Just to scry. Arguably, I should have been doing this for a while. I just figured that they have some kind of way to interact with it. 
Again, I'm doing it the wrong time. I need to do it in the second main phase. So I need to remember to put a stop here. Let's do this in response. Our opponent's been drawing two cards a turn for a long time. Either they're playing around stuff or they're worse at drawing cards right now than I am. Let's go black, I guess. Legionnaire, no. Put a stop here as well. So we can do it on our turn also, before our draw step. Right, spell bombs galore. I'm sure that diligent excavator is a key part part of the combo. We haven't even seen it. Another, this one a five powered. That's gonna be even harder to remove. All right, so we get back. God's willing. I guess we can just do it now rather than do it on our upkeep. Basically, get two scries this cycle. No, still not looking for you. Shock is a start. We can shock away the Emery, but the opponent can sacrifice this to return the Emery. So we have to wait until they sacrifice the spell bomb. They can just turn the Lazav into the Emery. I guess that cost them like three mana, but it's something. It's something they have to spend their mana on. Could be worse. Luris. Still nothing gustable here. But the breach is. Spell bomb, of course. How nice. Opponent's still not going for it. They're they're under no pressure, so I'm not And now they transform into an emery. As we try to dig for another shock. Actually, we need like two more shocks. Still, Reckless Rage is the card, right? That's that's the card that would have made a difference. Um, I'll just get this done. Nope. Still looking. Let's try again. There's our card. Will it be good enough? And where do we start? Taking out the stone coil isn't going to do too much good. Because then they have the five toughness one, but I guess we can attack with the Arcanist and get back the shock, right? Let's start with that. Dun dun do 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 out. Opponent still has the spell bomb. Alright, let's let that damage go through. The opponent can use the spell bomb to save it. <clears throat> Okay, they're just drawing cards. I don't know, maybe they don't use the bounce triggers the way I would. So it would seem. All right, so in turn, resolve. Again, target creature I don't control, that's you. Target creature I do control, that's you. 
We'll get it back at the on their end step, but I think we just want this stone coil out of the way. I guess they can play another one, right? With the Lazav. Ah, oh, Emery, you're such a pain. You're such a pain. Yeah, I think that was a mistake now. Should have taken out the, the Lazav. First time playing the deck in a while, but that was pretty low. That was pretty dumb on my part. I try to learn from mistakes, so I'm not afraid to call them out when they happen. It still hurts it still hurts sometimes though, when I feel like I'm throwing a game while I'm trying to entertain you guys. So how are we going to get around the stone coil? What's the play? I, it just doesn't seem like there's much choice, right? It's just not gonna happen. How are we gonna deal 10 freaking damage? Don't call a serpent. What a card. A Defiant Strike would also go a long way to just giving us card advantage. Um, it's been really rough not being able to draw that card. So we can do eight total damage to this. What we can do is we can throw the Insight here and attack. If the opponent well, this doesn't actually work, though. Yeah, the opponent just plays it again, so we need to get rid of this before we can worry about that. Or, can we get it back with the Arcanist? We don't get a choice on this, right? Hold on. Four damage to target creature, and you don't. This says, Exile that card instead of putting it if you do. Okay, so we don't get a choice. Otherwise, I could put this in, I could let this go to graveyard, and then I could uh, do this multiple times. But as it is right now, let's take you out. Opponent still has a ton of cards in hand, and I do feel like they're just playing with me. We play around Spell Pierce here by um, shocking the land. For those of you wondering, which they did show us a few times, or just once, but you get my drift. Oh, they're getting aggressive. Okay, that makes sense too. Um, man, can't gain protection from it. No blocks. Can they just shock me to death? Either gust would be useful. Buy me another turn. I hate them so much. <laughs> I really do. Just nothing but stone coil abuse. Okay. Oh man, it didn't. It did the thing again. I forgot to mark it. Why am I so bad at this deck? So too many choices for me. Useless. Um. No. <laughs> the deck was absolutely, absolutely rude to me. I. I could have played better though. I shouldn't I shouldn't be mad. What a weird game, just just hosed by ten power stone coils. Alright. Alright, it's time to it's time to get the tryhard back out. I've been I've been going soft. That's just the truth. I've been too playful. I should be I should be bringing it. I should not be I should not be throwing away my shot. I should be going for it. Alright. Fabled Passage. Do we get in there with the District? Or do we get the Dreadhorde Arcanist down? Let's go with the Legionnaire and be aggressive. Our opponent fetched Mountain. I'm not even sure what that might be yet. But this card can get out of control quickly. Which is Oven. Claim the Firstborn. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Very nice. How many claims do you think they have? Well, I'm glad I drew a land. Makes me feel a little better. We're already down to 14. 
but we've got the position and the opponent with a priest. Priest is shock bait. There is a question out of whether when to make them use their oven. I, let's just do it now. Overthinking that one. I want to get the other. I want to get the arsonist down and protect it. So we're not pumping the legionnaire this turn. Leave up the ominous one mana. I've been in the opponent's position many times. It's like, oh god, what do they have? All right. Whoa, Strida. Let's use the Defiant Strike now. We can get it back with Red Horde Arcanist on our turn. Another land. I think that's enough. Cauldron Familiar is still legal and historic. Nobody forget. Ever, never forget. Feather. Yes. No Reckless Rage yet, but Feather is a card. Let's get it on the field. So anything we cast from the graveyard comes back to us. But I think our first priority is to shock this Woe Strider with the Dreadhorde Arcanist. Free shocks, boys and girls. Scry the goat. The goat didn't get to block first, though. So they kept on top. Must be good. I'm guessing a cat is what I would keep on top. I don't know if I could keep a Mayhem Devil without a cat. So I'm going to guess it's a cat. It's a butcher. Interesting. OK, there's the cat. I think we're still in a good spot, though. Dragon. Rock and roll. This is really cool. We get to get back the Defiant Strike with the Arsonist, the Arcanist, and then it goes to our hand. We should put the plus one plus O on the Sprite Dragon, so it gets in. If the opponent goes for Sacrifice Dreadhorde Butcher, target the Dragon now. We use Fight as one. What are your blocks? Double block. Interesting. Hmm. I guess we can let it go to damage, and if they redirect with the Butcher, then we fight as one, but we lose out on some damage that way. If we play this now, they will cycle the Butcher, deal more to my face. I guess that's fine. Let's just play this now. Target non-human and target human, so both. Target human, that's you. Target non-human, that's going to be you. Indestructibility, more triggers, more damage. Don't need another God's Willing. Pretty much looking for Reckless Rage. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. Almost there, but don't forget they have the cat for one more life. I also couldn't pump another creature with my fight as one. This is the only human. Two, three. Butcher doesn't have anything it can really pick on, so it goes for the face. They need an epic turn. I think they're covered. Should be fine. Rakdos Sacrifice, though. It's probably going to remain one of the top decks in 
historic for a long time. People miss their cat oven, and it's perfectly competitive with better mana thanks to Summit. So I think we'll see a lot, a lot of the cat oven. You don't have a way to sacrifice the butcher though. They can get it back with Death Touch, but right now they don't have a way. It's probably bonus, but why not? Cat the cat oven deck is never like truly dead until it's mega dead, right? Okay, they scoop it up. They could have still had one more land or something. Who knows? The hand has good mana and some threats, so it feels like a keep. I do need to draw good payoffs. Like, fight is one. I need to do a little better. Let's get the ones that make white mana under the field. Opponent coming out swinging. Yelling at me so much. I think it's the Hollow Blade, because the Hollow Blade, we can discard a card, might force the opponent to pump mana into their knight or trade with their Temerat. We saw the Goblins player attack right into it. They go for Disfigure, nothing I can do about that. But Disfigure wouldn't have helped much with Fight as One either. And they miss a land drop. That is definitely an opportunity. But which opportunity should we use? I feel like I want to shock the knight. I don't know if fight is one is necessary. If I'm going to shock, I should play the... Oh, this thing is actually a pain, right? This exiles my graveyard. But while they don't have much mana... Yeah, while they don't have much mana, they can't use it very well. I'm going to play Dreadhorde Arcanist because it plays around Disfigure. I'm going to shock their Knight of the Ebon Legion because if they don't spend their turn getting rid of this shock, the Arcanist brings it back and kills their Temerat. Or they could kill the Arcanist, but that's that's fine too. Okay, they don't want to play that. Uh, not much of a game. Usually I don't include those in the videos, but during a ranked run I usually include all of the games if I can. We'll see what happens. Is shock good? If our opponent's playing creatures, this hand is fine. If they're not, let's let's see it. Let's do this. To battle. Aggro is the way most of the time, but you sure do feel ambushed when they come at you with something different. All right, guys. I think a Sprite Dragon might run into a Spectral Sailor. Let's go for the Arcanist. The Arcanist is also pretty sweet because if they counter, yeah, there's the Sailor. So if they counter the Shock, we can get it back for free. Okay, what is going on? Reckless Rage off the top. So this turn, I like going for the Pet and the Shock. Rattle Chains. Protect it with Hexproof. Nice. But... We get the free shock on the Rattle Chains, and we get to pump the Sprite Dragon. Spirits. I have not played against Blue-White Spirits in Historic yet. Alright, this says... Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability for the first time each turn, counter that spell or ability. That's rough. So, well, actually, we can play Reckless Rage, get it countered, and get it back for free with the Arcanist. And I think that's better than playing a Feather. Because I don't think we're going to resolve a ton of Reckless Rages.
Bang. Got him. <laughs> Got the little bugger. And they have to deal with our 5 5 flyer. But we're out of spells. We're just going to be playing Flying 3 4 Angels. Should be a tough matchup, though, for Spirits. Sailor keeps getting busy. Relentless. Let's see what they do about the Sprite Dragon. I could attack with this too, it's kind of free. I'm trying to think of what they could play that would give them two power and I can't think of it. You know what they could play? Another Spectral Sailor, which would be a 2-2 because of the Phantom. That would be a punish. Let's not, let's not walk into that, just in case. One more turn, and with God's willing, protection from blue can finish them next turn. They did have the sailor. Okay. Whew. Almost messed that up. So what's the white for? What what spirits is there? Hanged executioner. Three mana for two dudes. Dungeon Geist. All right, that, that is tapped down. So I can give this pro blue, then I can flash it back with Dreadhorde Arcanist, give that pro blue, but that only reduces the opponent to one. Oh, I can't flash it back actually, because it doesn't go to the graveyard because of this, because I still have to remember how my cards work. So let's go here, say blue. Do not need the land. Get in for three. I think we play second feather, but if the opponent has second dungeon geist, that would be horrible. So let's just move to end step and hang on to the gods willing. I don't think they can hit me for 14. They would need rally, rally the, of wings. I don't think they run that. Five, six, seven, thirteen. <laughs> thirteen is not fourteen. Ouch. Okay, they must have a counter, right? If I top deck the land, well, if it gets countered, I just use the Arcanist. We're fine. This can also pay for a Lofty Denial. Whew. Spirits, run for my money. Scary game. The Sacred Foundry makes the mana untapped and awesome. Let's keep it. I like this hand a lot. Should I shock to have the option to shock? If they go turn one Skirk Prospector, I'm gonna want this shock, but let's be let's be conservative. Let's not show our hand right away. Shock also gets a lot better once we have a Sprite Dragon on the battlefield. Dwarven Mine. Mono red? Must be mono red. The Sprite Dragon might get bone crushed here, but then we get to play Feather. Yep. God's willing. Do we wait one more turn for our feather? They could have a lava coil, but mono red just doesn't run much removal that hits this. This is bold, but I'm doing it. I don't want to wait an extra turn. If they have like shock bone crusher, I'm really going to regret it. Oh, it's a full price light up the stage. Okay then. So we can play the Hollow Blade. Um, yeah, let's play Hollow Blade. Let's use a Defiant Strike to get the card draw and have the mana up for the God's Willing. So stop in the right place so that we can use Defiant Strike and still have it for next turn. Bone Crush. Damage can't be prevented if I let this resolve, so we have to do this now. It's kind of a trap. If I let one of those resolve, then it, then I'm in big trouble. Okay. Whew. 
Ooh. 16. That was mono red. All right. It's all about the sprite dragon. If the shocks are good, the hand is good. Let's 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 believe in the shock. We're up against Tony and Diamond 4. We got paired down. We have to keep the gate. Oh no. <laughs> That's not good. All right. I'm going to slow roll the dragon. But if the opponent has thought erasure, Okay, some kind of Grixis. Start the beat. Start the beats. What are you up to, Grixis? Are you the Grixis combo from earlier, or something else entirely? Are you Nicole Bolas? There's a lava coil, indestructible. Save our sprite dragon. Reckless Rage off the top. Two Sprite Dragons. Prepare for Sweeper. But I feel like I have to be super aggressive with this hand. Cast down. Again, we'll save it. Save our dragons. And they scoop it up. I was I was almost running on empty. How close were we to lethal, though? That's the good question. Uh, people asked me this a lot on stream yesterday. Let me answer it quickly. I believe the highest I've ever been ranked is number 12. So uh, that's what I can remember. I didn't screenshot it at the time. It was very early in the creation of the arena ladder, so I didn't even consider it a big accomplishment back then. I didn't know how popular Arena was going to become, so I didn't even take a screenshot. So this is the highest in, I guess, my screenshot era, and uh, let's have a look here. So this doesn't resolve. This is a temporary plus one, so this is five total. And then each one of these adds two counters and is two damage. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, the opponent's at 16. If I drew one more spell, like a fight is one, if I had one more fight is one for anything that gives, or defiant strike would do it too, it could have been lethal next turn. Last time we played Dave the Man, Dave the Man was playing the Grixis combo deck. Is this deck, is this hand fast enough? But I think Reckless Rage and Shock are pretty good against his cards. So... We need to draw into a feather. If we do, I think this hand is really good. Let's keep. Also, those stone coil serpents, man. Those freaking stone coil serpents. Let's pay two life. I don't think the life total is going to matter, but if they, if if Dave manages a turn one Emery, shocking it could definitely matter. There's a spell bomb. Okay. Tenth district legionnaire. That's a good one. I did not see much removal, so this is a quicker clock than the Hollow Blade. Can we get revenge? It would be a sweet revenge. All right. They kept on top. They probably won't block the Legionnaire. I'm just trying to decide if I also want to play the Hollow Blade this turn, and I think that I do. We can target the Legionnaire because the trigger makes it big enough. Uh, yeah, let's keep an Arcanist. That might be good. And we just need to try to finish this as fast as we can. Before the combo deck does gross things. Another Lazav is unfortunate. And they keep. So if they block the Hollow Blade, we'll just try to take a trade rather than discard to protect. Because if we discard, the opponent will use a spell bomb. Um, let's pass, and they'll spell bomb something, and maybe we defiant strike something else. And if they don't spell bomb, that's fine. All right, they go after the Legionnaire. 
That's fine. Let's Defiant Strike here. Maybe we'll even draw a protection spell. Ooh, Feather. Okay. This bounces. They take four. So, do we play the Ar... We don't actually have a spell in hand to work with the Feather. So let's play the Arcanist so that we can attack with it next turn and get a spell back. There's the Excavator. That is a big part of the combo that they never found in game one. So both of our hands are much more ideal this game. That stupid stone coil. At least we can shock it. And right now there is a breach. Remember that Aether Gust that sat in our hand? I would love to draw that right now. It's a land. Let's play the Feather so we can get back either the Defiant Strike or the Rage. Probably the Rage, right? Let's use... Yeah, if we get the Rage back, we get to kill this, this, and this, right? But we don't get it back until end step. So, we don't get to kill everything. We either get to Rage both of these. I think we let them keep the Stone Coil then, don't we? Let them keep the stone coil. Target creature you don't control. Let's get the excavator off the battlefield. And they're going to scoop that one. So I think the plan is to get the Reckless Rage back on end step, re-Reckless Rage the Lazav. The opponent's not quite dead, it's close. They'll probably block the stone coil on the hollow blade. We can discard the Legionnaire to the Hollow Blade to keep it on the battlefield. I think that's better than holding this back, especially since it's multicolored and they play Stone Coil. And then I think they're dead the next turn. I think they're dead the next turn. It would be really hard to combo from there. Vengeance! Yeah, it's a keeper. We'll need the land for the feather, but with Defiant Strike, we should be able to get there. Lurus. Not sure what the Lurus deck is. We'll find out. Selfless Savior, here we go. Might be an or might be the Aura's list. I've heard about it, I've never played against it. Looks like the Aura list. I don't have any removal right now. This this could get ugly. And yeah, and the double doggo of indestructibility is also probably a, a tough ask. All right, we're playing Feather this turn, but let's swing. And the opponent says, we'll take it. Here's Feather. Staggering Insight is LOL, though. We can work our way through the doggies, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So strong. All right, so what do we need? We absolutely, positively aren't going to be able to raise this. So we need to remove it. So we need to find Reckless Rage. So there's going to be a lot of Defiant Strikes. And I think I'm just gonna launch one right now. Try to draw into it. No luck yet. How about another one? We're going to see a lot of extra cards. I don't know if any of them will save me. Swing, swing. Yep, take it all. End of turn, get the Defiant Strikes back. All right, let's see if we can draw in to the Reckless Rage here and at least force some doggies to be sacrificed. Oh, sounds so bad. All right, didn't do it. Failed. Will it be an All That Glitters for the ultimate rubbins? It is. Oh no. I'm seeing so many cards, but it's not enough to matter. All 
All right, we'll strike again. Come on, come on, deck. I don't know how I would get around the Miscloaked Herald anyway, but I need it just to be competitive. That's <laughs> freaking saviors. How about Light of Hope? That's a card I, I played in my feather decks when I was trying to make this archetype work before. Light of Hope would be pretty nice right now. A million cards. None of them kill anything. None of them work. None of them do the job. <laughs> that will not do. Also will not do. Also were not good enough. Ah, uh, good game. Streak ends at 11. And we are back for the post-game wrap, and I learned a lot playing Feather. I made a lot of mistakes early on playing the deck. I got a bit better as it went on. It wasn't enough in the end. It, does it mean that I need to find another removal spell? Is Swallow Hole a card that we should actually put into our Feather deck? Because if our opponent has a tapped creature, we can go after it. Sure would have been nice tech. Um, Light of Hope is another one that's really tempting to put in the deck because you can either loop it with plus one plus one counters or pick off troublesome enchantments. And the Aether Gust didn't help me, and Staggering Insight, I never felt like I needed. So, uh... Season Hollow Blade was okay, maybe I'd trim that to one. I think what I'd try if I were to play this deck even more is I would trim one Season Hollow Blade, one Aether Gust, and one Staggering Insight. I would add one Swallowed Hole. I would add one Light of Hope, and maybe the fourth Shock. Or maybe a second Swallowed Hole. I think with the Auras deck being out there more and more, there's probably like some combination of those cards should be good. But uh, thank you. Uh, go search for exactly this name on Twitter and you should find the deck's original player. I also believe I saw it retweeted by Fireshoes, uh, at Fireshoes. Big shout out to that Twitter account. And please um, subscribe to this channel, the Arena Deckless Podcast, my weekly podcast with Arjuna. We also like to do special episodes whenever big announcements come out. I can't tell you how many DMs, tweets, and YouTube comments I received this week. Literally hundreds, um, several hundred. Uh, asking me what I thought of the bans when they happened. Well, one of the first things I do when a ban happens is I go live on Twitch. So look for me on Twitch and follow me there. And then I record a podcast with Arjuna. So subscribe to the Arjuna Craft podcast and you'll probably get my uh, takes on the bans pretty quickly. So with that said, thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.